Um, so, you know, besides the age of uh, the puffin, is there are there any other things that you think make her a really unique boat? Things that I should focus on when I'm taking pictures? Well, the fact that it was, you know, maybe the stern is, it's different than a lot of these other boats because it was built as a tugboat. You know, so it's not just square in the stern. It's like it tapers down and then almost kind of rises up um, back in the stern. And everything else seems to be pretty traditional about it. Um, I remember Charlie told me that this thing had a 600-horse caterpillar in it when he got it. And they almost tore the stern off, towing something. Uh-huh. You know, when it started to get a little older and age and all the fasteners and stuff. So they had to put it up in the yard and redo the stern <clears throat> and pull the 600 horse cat out. And that's when they put this Jimmy in there. Because I, I don't know, I think that's about, it's probably 120 horse or something like that down there now. So it went from 600 horse to 120. So And it had that extra power because she was t- tugging. tugging. Yeah. Okay. Dragging around those fish traps. I don't know how big uh, Sunner Murphy always, t- you know, talked about those fish traps. And, you know, you see that one anchor that's in town, you know, it's, and that's massive. So uh, I don't know how big these fish traps were. You know, I never saw any, but, you know, for needing a tugboat, they must have been pretty good size. So I can only speculate how big they must have been. Um, but yeah, definitely some interesting history on this boat as far as, you know, fish, fishing up out of Baranoff, doing fish traps and stuff. So, um, my friend John Skobluk at Trident told me that Charlie packed a bunch of fish for him too. So I don't know, you know, if it was in the eighties or the nineties or when it was, but it sounds like maybe between Wrangell and, and here. They did a bunch of packing. Mm. So, uh, yeah, John called me out of the blue. Hey, did you buy the puffin? It's like, yeah. He said, he, Charlie packed a lot of fish for us. So, yeah, this thing's done a bunch of stuff. You know, tugboat, saner, crab and boat, and a packer. So, you know, the fish hole's not that big, but I think maybe they're running like bunny fish or something. Mm. You know, maybe sockeye. Yeah. Uh, it's hard to say. Some deck coats, maybe? Yeah. Uh, I want to say he was tender and maybe for some gill netters or something. He said he had the whole, Charlie said he had the whole fish hold full of totes. You know, he said he could put quite a few of them uh-huh. down there, you know, for each one of the gill netters or however it worked. Um, but I think he was just, you know, when he was packing fish for Trident, what he told, I think that was for uh, the Saners. Uh-huh. You know, they would just take, like I said, I think they'd just take the money fish. Because this boat's not that, you know, for a saner, it doesn't hold that many pounds compared yeah. to some of these other boats. Even back then, there was boats that were, well, I don't know. I guess they were all probably around twenty to 50,000 pounds back in the day. I don't think they were real big. But you didn't need that many fish to make money back then, you know. I think probably fish prices are still the same for what back then as compared to now and shoot all you had to do is put your net in the water back in the day and it came back full now you could have the best gear money can buy and there's just not that many fish around at least for saying it 